Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Round five of the 2023 FIM Sidecar Motocross World Championship finds us back in France and how thrilled we are to be at Bru. Legendary track about 50 miles from Le Mans. Been a lot of motocross here over the years and it's a pretty town as well. Season kicked off in Spain. Talavera de la Reina was the scene of the first round, and what a round it was! Action packed under blue skies. A few guys really, really made a name for themselves. Then we moved on to Portugal. Alcadeo Torres Novas, another brilliant track, hard packed, very fast, and more stars came to the fore. Portugal was a round to remember. Then came the deep sand of Herda in the Netherlands. It was good news for some, bad news for others. Kuhn Hermans, Ben van der Burgart did the double. Justin Kuban blew an inch. No doubt, the man at the top though, coming here to France. Marvin, I make no apologies for talking to you every round, but you are the man of the moment and you come here to brew leading not just the World Championship, but the French Championship as well. So you'll have a lot of support here this weekend. Yeah, for sure. Nicola told me already that uh, it will be a busy weekend for us. Uh, yeah, there will be uh, come a lot of people with nice weather, nice track, and uh, hopefully nice result uh, on the end of the weekend. So uh, I think we, uh, we are ready with the team. What about the Brew circuit? It's obviously not new to you. You've been here before. Yeah, we was here already for uh, the French Championship. It's uh, it's a new track here in Brew, but I like more uh, the track like uh, it was before. But okay, it's still a nice track and still uh, on the on the hard pack, so uh, we love it. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready for it. I remember how it was before. It was a long time since I was here, but you're right. It was a good layout then. One thing that hasn't changed is the start finish straight. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, and uh, yeah, like you know, uh, everywhere is the start uh, very important, so it will be also here, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make it good, and uh, then we will see. Local ground for Killian and Evan Prudier. We're talking to a lot of passengers this week, and I'm with Evan Prunier, the younger brother of the Prunier brothers, who are the reigning French champions. But you come here to brew, Evan, with quite a lot of work to do in the World Championship. Maybe this could be your weekend. Yeah, we know a tough beginning of season for me. So we are here to score good points for the return of the French GPs. So I hope for a good weekend. You've obviously ridden brew many times before. How successful have you been here on this track? Yeah, we ride uh, many times in French Championship. We, we make podiums, we make uh, good training also. So yeah, we know the track and we give everything to get a uh, good point uh, this weekend. You've had some bad luck with injuries, a wrist this year. Is all that now behind you? Yeah, I hope uh, everything is behind me. So now I'm ready to fight and score maximum points as we can. Uh, so, the race from the outside, so I don't like that, so I'm here to fight to, to come back uh, stronger than ever. One final question, it looks to me as though there will be many people here this weekend. What does that mean to you too, to have your home supporters behind you? Yeah, that would be great, so I, I'm happy to be here the, in front of the French crowd, so that will be a tough weekend. Davy Sanders, Luke Rostang, another Frenchman here, the passenger Luke. Luc Rostang, as you well know, is passenger to Davy Sanders at the last round in Herde in the Netherlands. They had a brilliant ride, now find themselves seventh in the title chase. Luc, you're here at your home Grand Prix and it's going to be in front of a big crowd. What does that mean to you? Uh, I'm really happy because uh, after a few years we don't ride in GP in France and now it's really good for, for all for the public, for the team, for the organization, and for the federation, it's good. Last year, you and Davy on this very track in the French Championship won all three races. Does that mean this is a track you really like? Yeah, uh, 
Last year is good for for this year because uh, we ride with a new new track. It's a little bit different, but uh, we have a good feeling this year and uh, we hope a good result. Yeah. What is it about France and Cycar Cross that attracts always so many people? So many people love it. They all come, and we will get a lot this weekend. Yeah, I think very very many people this weekend because uh, it's really important we have a race in France with more people it's possible uh, it's really important in France yeah and we will have two GPs in France this year thankfully two, two Grand Prix in France this year this one yes and it's one a towards... chance it's yeah. a chance for all for for the team for the sponsor and for the, the spectator it's good this brew track has special memories for me. I'm not going to tell you how long ago it was I was here, but when I spoke to Nicolas Musset about it a couple of weeks ago, he said the track has changed quite a bit since my day. In what way, Nico, has it changed? Yeah, they changed everything, uh, like you can see. Uh, they changed everything on the track. And uh, yeah, now it's a new track, new ground. They put uh, a new ground uh, on, the, on, the, on the track. And uh, yeah, some part is good. But some path is not so wide, so it's not easy to pass uh, someone. So yeah, we have to find uh, some solution to pass. But uh, yeah, it's great. I think for the public, we can see everything. So certainly that. When I spoke to some of the teams yesterday, and I think you were part of that, the general opinion was that it's not wide enough. Although yeah. you know, it it seems to be okay. Yeah, yeah. it's not so wide, and uh, I think for the for the solo bike is is nice, but for Saka, the the track is good. The new track is good, but just need to be a little bit more wide to see uh, more uh, you know uh, more battle with uh, much team you know because now you can see uh, and the quality race is a little bit like a train. Then you cannot pass uh, where you want. The Motor Club du Brou has been running major events for many, many years, so they certainly would know how to build a track, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's all right, and uh, I think it's uh, it's maybe new motivation for the club to change, and uh, yeah, maybe, I don't, I don't know everything, but it's maybe about the rules or something like that. What about the spectators here? Because they're legendary, aren't they? The French spectators and the commentator. You know, there's just one terrific atmosphere of motocross in France. What, why is that? Why? I don't know. But uh, yeah, you see, uh, the, like I say uh, yesterday, the, the French fan uh, love cyclocross. We are on the region uh, of cyclocross, and uh, yeah, we are waiting. Uh, I think all fans waiting at the GP. French GP, uh, the last one was 2016 here. So, yeah, I think they, they have a good remember because I win uh, two, two years with uh, my cousin here. So, uh, yeah, we will see. Maybe tomorrow we, we can do the same and, uh, yeah. Two races in Group A, Group B, and uh, Quali A. We're looking for the top 12 to go through here. And it's a pretty, pretty short start straight. Look to the right-hand side. Etienne Bax absolutely flying. He and Andre Jermak into an early lead, the number 82. Marvin Van Luken, it goes with him. Davy Sanders, Luke Ross Stang, true to his word up there. There's Tim Prumer, Janos Stegman in the orange and blue. Devil Dare there, 47. Tom van der Lagerbat behind him. Good start by some of these crews. Only three left-handed chairs here this weekend. One, of course, our own Brett Wilkinson. I say our own, for the British fans, that is. He and Joe Millard reckon to go well here. Van Luken are then behind Davy Sanders and Luke Rostang. A great start by Sanders. They go very well here in France. Do as much of the French Championship as they can. Red plate holder Marvin Van Lukener then comes here leading the championship. That's why he's got the red plate. You can see what we were saying about it not being too wide in places here. Nico Musset 
a little bit puzzled as to why it is as narrow as it was when it seemed to be wider here for the French Championship. But still Davy Sanders holding off Marvin Van Luken. Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak are away with it. There he is, Etienne Bax has already got a significant lead. Van Luken are now up to second. He and Nicolas Mousset. Davy Sanders, Luke Rostand. Red plates at stake here, of course. Bax is closing in after a torrid start to the season with a big crash in Spain. But he's getting himself sorted out. Number 17, Tim Prumer, the German. Jano Stegmans, his passenger. Behind Joshua and Noah Weinman with a left-hand chair. These young Germans going well here with a left-handed chair. One of only three, as I said. Good to see the young Germans getting a flying start. Oh, look at that leg in the air for Pruma. He's a stylish, another stylish young pair. Young teams, very much the feature of the moment in this. The Leferinx ahead of them. Tim and Sam Leferinx, the number 75 crew ahead of Pruma and Stegmans. And still the Weinman brothers, the number 25 crew chasing Pruma hard. The Leferink boys, so two sets of brothers there, with Pruma and Stegmans in the middle, filling in the sandwich, the fraternal sandwich, if I can put it that way. Well, I'm really, really impressed with Joshua No Wine. Good for the sport of Psycar Cross that we have all this young talent. That's not taking. Oh, look, what's that? A problem? Maybe he's pulled out. Pulled out his cutout or something, I don't know. Hand in the air for Pruma. Qualifying race A, leaders then by a country mile, Bax and Chermak. Wearing their green strip for the qualifying races. No doubt they will change later. And following them home, it is Van Lukena and Nicolas Mousset. Number two crew. Sanders and Luke Rostang safely in third. Good ride by Davy Sanders. Strong here in France. There's a massive crowd here as we look at Gert van Verven and Robin de Vena. Van Verven, big Dutchman. Vena riding for the first time with him this season and doing well. They've done a great job together. Tom van der Lagermat. And Van Hal, number 99 crew. Going strongly here in about eighth position at the moment, so a good ride for them. Max and Chermak, though, on their way to qualifying group A victory here, giving themselves every chance of a cracking start. Again, hard on the left. You saw where they started from, and it's victory. Qualier goes to Max and Chermak. He is definitely back in the group. That pair get on so well, and that's important in this sport. Runners up, Van Lukener and Nico Mousset. Davy Sanders, Luke Rostang bringing it home. In third, they're happy with that. Fourth place for Van Verven. There he is, number 11. And then behind him, it's Lefrik. There it is confirmed. Bax, Van Lukener, Sanders, top three, Van Verven. Leferink, the Weinman brothers, uh, Pruma, Stegmans, Tom van der Lagerman, Remo Kayser, the young Swiss, in ninth place, running up the top ten. Romerick Chanteloup, Johnny Bidet. We didn't expect it. We had a very good race. I think the track suits us very well. Hard pack, I liked it. I prefer hard pack. Uh, hard pack, yes. There are three left-hand sidecars here. You. Marco Heinzer and Brett Wilkinson, all three of you have done very well. So obviously the track works for left-handed sidecars. Yeah, I think so. It's not, uh, it's, it's very good uh, for the left-hand sidecars, um, yes. Is this the best ride you've had this season? Yes, it's the best uh, quality race for us. I think we, in Herde, we finished ninth. Group B then. What can the boys do here? Again, that gate drops, and who's on the right-hand side this time? We're looking for Brett Wilkinson right over on the other side, the 199 crew. That looked like Jason Van Dahler. Through go the Pruniers, the 94, the Prunier brothers, French champions, of course, come here 
reigning champions of France. But it looked like Jason Van Dala had a good start. Not quite sure who picked that up from the word go. Justin Kerben is in this one. He needs a good, yes it is. It's Van Dala, Kostas Beletskas out in front from the Prunier boys. There is Justin Kerben, number seven. He and Dion Reitman. Uh, blew an engine in here, uh, much to their disappointment. They were on for a podium until that happened. That was disastrous for them. There's Brett Wilkinson, Joe Miller, the 199 crew, sliding through on the right-hand side, but not making it stick. Jason Van Tala being a hard nut to crack the 723 Belgian. Very, very quick in Spain. Very, very quick in Portugal. Not so quick in the deep sand of the Netherlands. And in an interview said to me, well, you got it wrong, Barry, because I'm not really a sand man. Uh, this is what he prefers, the hard going. Is Wilkinson looking for a way through here? Giving himself every chance and he's made it. Brett Wilkinson then. Coming here in fifth place in the standings. Wants to improve on that, obviously. And to do that, he's going to give himself a good grid slot. Kuhn Hermans, Kuhn Hermans, Ben van der Bogart, the number three. There they are. Sliding through, having a look on the inside of Van Dala. Still it's Prunier in fourth. Killian and Evan Prunier. Lille Bardis boys are in there. Gennady Ouvre, the Frenchman as well. But still Van Dala giving it best here. Keeping Hermans at bay. Can Hermans find a way through? Well, not at the moment. He's been thwarted. Thwarted every which way. But now he's through. By on the outside. Into that left-handed bend. Prunier saw that. He might want to have a go at that next time round. Great stuff, this. What a crowd we have. Look at them on the bank. Upwards, I would say, of 6,000 people here. And even more, probably, when we get to race day. The weather is glorious. The track is glorious. The French adore their cyclone mode. Across, as you heard Nicolas Musset say, there's Kerbin. Kerbin going through. And through underneath Prunier he goes. Justin Kerbin making amends for a DNF in the Netherlands. Now he's on the back of Van Dala. Hermans is away and through. Brett Wilkinson leading the race here. He and Joe Millard have built up something like a 10 second lead. We haven't seen anything yet of Marco Heinzer and Rudy Betchart, the other left handed chair. But they're in there somewhere. There's Prunier. There is. There's Heinzer. Heinzer and Betchart chasing Prunier. Now, let's see how this works. Can they fight their way through this battle? Jason Van Dala in front of Lille Bardis. Then Killian Evan Prunier. Then Heinzer behind. So he's got a lot of work to do if he's going to get his way past this bunch. Just see how well that left hand chair works. Marco Heinzer on the KTM. Determined, determined Swiss pair they are. He and Betchart. There he is, the number 93, having a look on the inside of Prunier. What a scrap we've got on here. Not really much room to pass, but if there's a way past it, Marco Heinzer will probably find it. Look at them jumping in the background here. Justin Kerbin, Jason Van Dala, Prunier in the back there. There's Lille Bardis, Daniel and Bruno Lille Bardis going through on Jason Van Dala now. But the Belgian not having any of it, fighting back. Lille Bardis boys showing what they're made of, actually. It's good to see. There they are, the 101 crew. Van Dala, Prunier. Still this scrap raging. Heinzer out of view at the moment, but he's been charging, charging through. Still Jason Van Dala trying hard to keep the Prunier boys at bay, the number 94 French champions. Looking left, looking right, no way through for them. Just, oh, that's Lille Bardis, Lille Bardis. Got a problem, he stalled it. That'll drop him down the order. He's got it fired up again and he's away at, they ride a mega, which is the Austrian two-stroke, competing very much with Zabel, but a different level of power delivery, very much in the top end. It's a different sort of animal to ride. There's Kerben. Kerben and Heinzer. Heinzer behind Kerben. If he nails Kerben, he will go third. Justin Kerben, Dion Reitman. Good 
good ride here. Look at that, a cloudless sky. Spectators absolutely lapping it up, but out in front, Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard with almost a 14 second lead now over Kuhn Hermans and Ben van den Bogart. Checkered flag for Wilkinson, what a way to celebrate here in qualifying race B. Wilkinson and Millard, second home, Hermans and Ben van den Bogart. Third for Heinzer Betschart, Kerben, Dion Rietman fourth. Third place then for the 93 Swiss crew. Great stuff. Good fight through from the left-handed chip. That's it, Wilkinson, Hermans, Heinzer, Kerben, top four. Prunier, Van Dala, Leal Bardis recovered for seventh place. Then Ovre, Gordiev, and Ivor van der Veel, Raymond, Stefan Weyers, Kevin van der Veel. Yeah, a really tricky start. Uh, the engine goes out and you know, we stuck behind the gate. And then we found good lines and had a good speed. To finish third and work your way through on a track which people said it's impossible to pass, amazing. Yeah, the left-hand chairs are working good on, on this track, I think so. And the right and left-hand chairs are going good to pass. And of course this week no more sand and you seem to like the hard pack. Yeah, yeah we like the hard pack, but uh, last week in the sand we, we liked this also, but uh, we have technical problems and the Sunday was not good last week. Hopefully tomorrow it's be better. Now the new season's well and truly underway, we want to run a feature which basically puts the spotlight on our teams as we go through the year. And there's no better place to start than the defending champions, Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a lovely day here, and we've got a weekend of racing ahead of us. Yeah, true. You know, uh, cannot be better after all the bad weather we had. I think uh, it's it, it been a really bad. Uh, season so far, uh, if you talk about the weather, you know, we were quite lucky with the GPs, but overall it was, was not too good, so uh, happy that we are here, 25 degrees, great track, what do you want more? Andre, it's still a long way to go in this season, obviously, so uh, you've got a little bit of catching up to do, but you've been there before, I've seen you there before, and you're looking forward to the rest of the year? Yeah, 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 exactly. It was not so bad, uh, not so good uh, start of the season, but uh, we are uh, everything in front of, and I think uh, it's everything happened, and uh, we are looking for, we are be lucky in the France back after pandemic, and uh, this is this track we like also both uh, also Etienne and me, and I hope it will be also for this season the best what we need. Andre, you're both family men. You've both got children. How do you reconcile your racing? with leaving the children behind in the Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy, of course, but uh, how said uh, Etienne, yeah, if you like to be uh, like a professional and have any uh, a lot of races during the season, you need to little bit uh, this uh, take behind. And uh, of course, we would like to be also with the family with the child, but uh, in this moment, if we have the full season, you need to only focus and concentrate for the races and then rest of the week you can spend little time with the, with the, with the child. Yeah. And you also must have very understanding ladies. I hope you look after them both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very important. Yeah. You have this a wife who says yeah, this weekend you're not going racing <laughs> and you have a big problem. You know? yeah. they, they know and uh, luckily they know my, uh, that they are all yeah, how bad it sounds, they will be in the second place, you know, and this is sometimes not easy, but uh, uh, after a while, after years, uh, they will understand, and uh, uh, yeah, you need to have, um, we need to have all good wives, you know, to do all this, and uh, because it's not only the GP races that we are far away from home, it's also in the week, you know, there's no time, there's no rest uh, week or something, you know, it's always something to do with the bike or with the truck or repairing or, it goes on, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a very full life. Well, thank you for giving us 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes of your time. Really appreciate it. The ultimate professionals and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Brew, just about 50 miles from Le Mans, a beautiful part in the Loire Valley, lovely town. Quintessentially French in every way. The weather here is gorgeous and just 
seven kilometers outside the town lies the motocross track of Brew. That's what we're here for, round five. Aerial view tells you how this layout is. And uh, the crowd's flocking in here. It's going to be a big, big, big day. Riders presentation, everybody queuing up to see the officials presented, the teams presented. What a crowd and what a spectacle lies ahead of us here in this iconic track in the Loire Valley. Tim Broom and Jano Stegmans, one of the young crews who've started the 2023 season really, really strongly. I'm here with Tim now. Tim, has this exceeded your expectations, what you've achieved this year? No, we uh, ex didn't expect anything. Uh, I knew we can ride fast, but uh, now I think we're near to the top group and uh, we want to get them to the end of the year. So to the end of the year. So now uh, we try to uh, keep the pace in, yeah. In the standings, there are three of you very close on points. Yes. So it's possible you could easily move two more places. Yes, I hope so. We, uh, this is a goal at the moment. We try to keep uh, the focus on the, um, on the standings. So uh, get the guys in front of us during the races and uh, hope on good positions. Let's talk about this track at Brew. Is this a track you've been on before? No, I think uh, French tracks are very special because the layout, the, the dirt and uh, the jumps. Um, it's good for me. I like hard pack and I like uh, off camber uh, corners and stuff. So that's good for me. But uh, jumping is not so easy in the dirt also. So I have a bit mixed feelings. Here's how they line up then. Quickest man round here was Etienne Bax from Group A, Wilkinson, Van Luken and Hermans, Sanders, Heinzer, three left-handed sidecars only, and two of them are in the top 10. There's the other one, the Weinman brothers, left-handed chair for them, Van Dahler, Lil Bardis boys. What a bevy of talent we've got. And of course, bolstered by an awful lot of French teams as well. Further down the order then are 30, make it with Gronman and Kathoven, the final entries in. 20 and 16 years old, those boys. Take it easy. Well, the tension's building, the crowd is in, the car parks are full, the riders are ready. Race one, just around the corner. Look at that crowd. Here we go then, 30 riders, two rows, brew. This iconic track is gonna be the scene of what? A cracking start by Etienne Bax and Andre Chermat in red. Jason Van Dahler was in there as well as a big schmozzle on that first turn. But they're fighting, though, Tim Prumer. Tim Prumer, Jano Stegmans. Our interviewees are there in second place ahead of the red plate, I think, of Marvin van Luchena. Oh, goodness me. Upside down in the dirt. Bruma, it is van Luchena in third place. That was Jason van Dahler got stuck. Prunier is in there. Bruma going really, really well here. Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak, leading, setting out what they need to do. Van Lukena is the threat. He's there lurking behind Tim Pruma and Jano Stegmans. But what a cracking start for the KTM of Pruma. Prunier, there's Hermans. Hermans behind Prunier. There's Gert van Verven. Van Lukena passed. Up to second place and Van Lukena. Nicola Mousset. Le Musset, of course, on home ground here. The French will be going absolutely bonkers with one of their own, leading the French championship as well, of course, uh, as we go to press here, if you can put it that way. Leading the world and leading the French, not too shabby. Kuhn Hermans, Ben van der Bogart, the number three, ahead of 
just behind Killian and Evan Prunier. Prunier brothers reigning French champions. A look over the shoulder because they know that someone is coming. That was a good, good move by Herman who almost got alongside over that jump. Oh dear me, what's that? Is that Leo Bardis? Is that, that's Leo Bardis. That's Bruno Leobardis stumbling. They got it really wrong over that jump. Landed on the sidecar wheel. Passenger came out. Are they going to get going again? That was a big impact on the sidecar wheel. Caught the passenger unawares, and he was off. Still Tim Pruma, Jano Stegmans. Now with Kuhn Hermans breathing down their necks. Justin Kuban. Dion Reitman, number seven, just having passed Gert van Verven and Robert de Vena. Brondman and Kateoven, the final 30th and final starters, the young boys making way, just getting out of the way because they know the quick men are coming here. Spanden Bogart going through, Kerben, Kerben, ahead of Brett Wilkinson. And Joe Millard fighting through here. Brett Wilkins and Joe Millard were caught up in that first turn schmozzle. Now they're having to put that left-hand sidecar to good use. And round they go. Ask Charlie Bonnet and Clementine Tamri. Clementine Tamri, the only female. And passenger Charlie Bonnet. Wilkinson and Millard, what a ride they're having. Curb and chasing. They're the tail enders. A little bit of an upturn there. Can't see who that is, but it's uh, on the inside line. Everybody else can make it safely through. Well, Brett Wilkinson fighting through. Where's he going to end up here? There they are in the bottom of the hill. And when he comes up against Marco Heinzer, it's going to be a very different kettle of fish because two left-hand chairs. Race leaders, Bax and Chermak on a really, really strong ride here. Marvin van Lucana, second place. He and Nicola Mousset. Fighting through. It's Hermans. There is Kuhn Hermans. Kuhn Hermans, Ben van der Bogart. Tim Prumer, Jano Stegmans. What a cracking start they had. They're, they're currently sitting in fourth place. Are they going to bring it home in fourth place? If they can hold on to fourth, that is a fantastic result. Back with the race leaders. There is no doubt that Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak are back to their old form and they needed to. Coming here, they were trailing and that's it. Check and flag then for Bax and Chermak. Well among the tail enders, but a great, great win for them. 25 points, what more can they do? The answer is nothing, that's good enough. Except we've got to do it again in race two. Second place for the red plate holder, Hermans and van der Bogart, a strong third. And Prima some way back, but holding on to fourth place, the German-Belgian pairing. Here they are, 17, Prima and Stegman. Confirmation then. Fourth for Pruma, Hermans van Luke and her backs. Prunier Wilkinson fought up to six from a tail end, bog last to six. What a result. Got past Heinzer. He was the difficult nut to crack. We finally had a good start in the World Championship um, and we had a whole race without problems. And then we can show that we are able to be top five riders. I think the speed is there and if we have some luck like today, the first heat, then uh, we show that we can be fourth. You were strong for the first half of the race and even then you kept the momentum going, but you were under some pressure. We were under a lot of pressure from Hermans. Um, we actually, it, it took a long time before Hermans uh, overtake uh, Prunier. And then before that we had a little gap and then Hermans came in, I think, in like two laps behind us. And we were like, uh oh. So uh, I said to Tim, just ride your line everywhere inside and it took a long time before Hermans passed us. Uh, and then actually he did not ride that fast away. Um, so that mental speed was not bad. Even at the end of the race we were still on a good pace. 
Well, there's the Lille Bardis crash. That was a big one. Bruno thrown out, and then Daniel into the fence. Yeah, I made a small mistake trying to pass on Verven. The bike got too much grip, and we went to the side. And my brother, the passenger, fell out, and I also went to the side and drove into the thing. When you came in, it looked to me as though the sidecar wheel was bent as well. Was that the case? Yeah, also the sidecar wheel was bent, so maybe that's why after 12 pace we couldn't get uh, the back the rhythm. But yeah, the race was good. I think the speed at the start was good also. Did you learn anything from that race apart from crashing? But are you going to change your start position or do basically the same thing? I think we will do basically the same, <laughs> maybe not crash, but uh, yeah, we'll try to pass more. Continuing our look at the FIM officials and what they do here in the World Sidecar Motocross Championship, I'm with the FIM Technical Director, Alan Laremaya. He's Estonian, a lovely man, perfect English. Alan, a responsible job you do, technical director, that's a big spectrum, but I see you doing the noise tests a lot. That's a very important part of it, isn't it? Well, yeah, noise tests have been part of the technical scrutineering already for many years. We have been modifying the, the method of the, of the measurement, but generally it has been done already, I can imagine, like 20 years. But since, uh, since now roughly 10 years, we are using the two meter max method, which is the most suitable for measuring the sound of, of motorcycles. In my write-ups, I, I describe your role as policing the mechanics and, and the... I mean, by definition, sidecar motocrossers are inventive people. They're creative, and that's a very difficult thing to police. Yeah, the sidecar motorsport is a very interesting thing because we have no standard machines or no serial machines. We are facing with prototypes. And then sometimes that makes the, the scrutineering, the inspecting of the safety of the bikes and all the all the units what are what they are using, it makes it really tricky and, and we have to really go deep in details every now and then. It's a challenging job you have. How do you manage your role of responsibility and legality with the relationship with the teams? FIM is always, you know, considered, not considered, but, but many riders and team think that FIM is, you know, like a police. They are watching, they control, they, they uh, are punishing, making penalties, but I wish it would not be like this. I, I wish FIM and the paddock, that the teams, the riders should cooperate because we have the same sport, same target, we have to collaborate, we have to cooperate, find new solutions, agreements, working with teams and have no enemies. At the same time, our rules are followed and respected. Respect was the word I was going to use because in the time that I've been in this paddock and got to know you, I, I can tell that the teams hold you in very high regard and that's important. Yeah, I appreciate that because this is my really important for me, that that teams or, or riders can come to me every time with questions about technical, about the general regulations, and I always want to help them and, and be for them anytime, everywhere, and that's why I'm getting quite many questions also through WhatsApp or, or phone or, or different channels. And here we are under sunny blue skies at a legendary track in France ahead of GP number, where are we? Number five, I think, now, aren't we? Correct, number um, five. Um, amazing, what an opportunity, and we call it work. Not really, is it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's perfect. It's perfect, you know, it's, it's Friday, and always the Friday afternoon, everyone is positively excited. They're coming together, unpacking their trucks, preparing the, the paddock, and then, you know, it's an amazing atmosphere. I, I really love it, love it. On Saturday is already becoming more intensive, more focused on, on racing, riding, but Fridays are my, my favorite. And Sunday evenings as well. If everything goes well, then Sunday evening is also enjoyable. Of course. One final question. Does clothing come within your remit or is that the responsibility of the organizers? Yeah, this is the thing what, what is, you know, generally our job to, main job is to focus on, on safety safety of, of machines, safety of, of gears, and of course that the riders 
going home every uh, Sunday evening after the races. So gear, helmets, body armors, this is number one for us. And, and also the regulations and rules are becoming more and more strict to the gear and also to the helmets. So FIM have the homologation program for helmets. Uh, already now uh, the circuit racing is using only FIM uh, homologated helmets, but also off-road disciplines are moving in this direction that starting from 2026 all the helmets must be homologated by the FIM. Well. One race done, another one coming up just around the corner, and uh, the tension could not be higher. The crowd is so enthusiastic. The commentator is going berserk. Race two is a fraction away. Here we go then, this is it. 30 minutes plus two laps ahead of these guys. Etienne backs again, starting on the hard right. We should look at it. What's he getting? Oh, it's a good one by Brett Wilkinson. A good one by Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard. But did they get? Somebody got caught up again. Surely not Brett. Surely he's away this time. Now look at it into second place. There's Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard in third. That's a cracking start. That's much better. Grondman there, 114, getting away again. So they're very much learning their craft. They've got a lot to learn, those young guys, but they'll get there for sure. Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard ahead of the Prunier boys. Then it's Goon Hermans. Then it's Tim Prumer, Jano Stegmans. Again, the German Belgian crew, number 17. Getting a good start, not as good as last time, but they're up there in the leading bunch. That's where they need to be. Brett Wilkins and Joe Millard came here with some work to do to try and elevate themselves up the standings. And after a torrid start in race one, they fought through to sixth place. They're now sitting third. There they are in the blue shirts, just going out of sight. Bax, Van Lukener, Wilkinson, Prunier, Kuhn Hermans, Tim Prumer. Didn't get the red shirt. There's Kerbin. There's Kerbin in there. Had a few teething problems with his new motor in qualifying. Justin Kerbin has been riding really, really well this year. And I fully expected him to go well here. And he has not disappointed. Hermans, the passenger flicking adeptly from side to side. And that's over the back wheel. Left arm round the waist. And oh, who's that upside down? Is that Leffering? Looks like Tim and Sam Leffering, the number 75 crew, the brothers. Getting it wrong over those jumps, and it's quite easy. The jumps are fast here. They're high, there are some magnificent jumps. And the crowd being urged on by the trackside commentator. Van Lukener now on the coattails of Etienne Bax. So close, you can almost smell the aftershave. That is if Etienne Bax put any aftershave on. After race one, I doubt it very much. Look at Van Lukener. Van Lukener and Nicolas Mousset. If they get past, and they have got past, they're on target for overall victory here because they will be one race apiece, they and Bax. And as we all know, a second race gets the deciding verdict in the event of a tie. Prunier. Fighting Kuhn Hermans off. Hermans and Ben van der Bogart have got the speed now. They've got the speed over the jump and round they go. Moving up then, that's Hermans up to fourth place. Race leaders, new race leaders, the red plate holder, Marvin van Lukener, series leader. If things stay the way they are, he will retain the series lead. Here comes Wilkinson. They're in among the tail enders now. That's Charlie Bonnet, Clementine. Tamri again, but they're not lost. They're going reasonably well. Leferink, there is Prumer, there's Prunier, there's Lille Bardis boys. Lille Bardis boys going stronger this time. Daniel and Bruno, Lille Bardis. Are they 17 yet? Not sure. Started the season 16 years of age, but they're tall, identical twins. I can't tell them apart. I don't think many people can, to be honest with you. 
Bruman's statements, though, no mistaking them. But they're fighting off Lille Bardis, so they're in good company. These guys are the future of world-class sidecar motocross. All these young teams. Now the number seven, Justin Kuban, Dion Reitman. Sported a brand new Zabel engine, having blown it up. In fact, they did two motors in the deep sand of Herda. That was very tough on engines. They weren't the only ones to have mechanical problems. Etienne back still in second place, but dropping back now. Checkered flag for Van Lukener and Nicolo Mousset. A second and a first, they will take overall victory. Etienne back to Andre Chermak, bringing it home. Where's Brett Wilkinson? He's about 20 seconds behind. There he is. Wilkinson Millard coming in behind Grongman. And a fantastic ride. All those guys fought hard, but the top three, Van Lukener, Bax, and Wilkinson. Kun Hermans in fourth. Crowd now making their way up to the presentation. Confirmation then of that. Van Lukener, Bax, Wilkinson, Hermans. Neil Bardis got the better of Prunier. We saw that Tim Prumer, another top 10 finish for him. What a day they've had. Weinmann, the young Germans there in eighth again. Another left-hand chair. Uh, the starts went not so good uh, this weekend. Uh, we will work on this because, uh, yeah, on track like this is really important. So, uh, yeah, it was not easy to come from uh, four or five to the front. And uh, the, the speed was not, not the best this weekend. But uh, we will look forward and uh, we work on it. We talked before, it's a long, long season. And uh, to come away with an overall result is, is pretty positive, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Um, I think we will come back in Estonia and uh, there's a little bit sand, so uh, that's really good. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm from one side I'm happy because we, we made the progress again and uh, this is what we need. We win the qualifying heat yesterday and we win the first moto, so actually this was the first moto win this year, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But yeah, of course, you know, nothing counts on the double victory and... Uh, uh, so, yeah, it is, uh, I'm happy with a little touch, you know. Did you make any mistakes at all in race two? Because I thought once you got out there in the whole shot, that would be it, but it was not to be. Yeah, well, you know, we, we took a whole shot and then, then you're the first one, so you don't see the lines, you know. So uh, as soon as Marvin overtook us, he had a better line in that part and he overtook us so we can f see his lines and, uh, and improve on our lines. So, uh, yeah, he did not get away from us and it was uh, excitement until the last moment, I think, yeah. Well, brilliant by Bax, brilliant by Van Lukener. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm so happy for Nicola to, to make it for the French people. And uh, for me, uh, by myself, it was a really hard weekend. I had all the weekend problems with arm pump, so it's really hard. This track was hard for me, but uh, OK, we can make it. And uh, yeah, we're really happy with the team. Uh, yeah. The start was so important here, wasn't it? And you got a really good start in race two. Where exactly did you pass Etienne? Uh, we passed it in uh, the jump before the pit lane, so uh, I know it was important for me to, to pass him directly. I know uh, after 10-15 minutes I struggled a little bit with arm pump and after 20, 20 minutes it's going better. So for me was uh, was it hard uh, in the middle of the race, but uh, yeah, we, we closed the door and uh, then uh, the, the lap riders were, were coming, so uh, then we make a small gap and it was enough to, to the finish, so yeah, at the end I'm very happy. Well, look at that. Van Luken is still up on top. Etienne backs up into second place. It's a close call, though. Hermans right on his coattails. Wilkinson moved up a place back in fourth where he belongs. Kerben, Sanders, Van Verben, Tim Primer, well in the top ten. Got to be thrilled with that. Further down the order, Prunier Heinzer has had some bad luck. Mechanical problems recently. He's capable of a better place. Well, Brew has witnessed a brilliant Grand Prix here. We go from here to Estonia, to Langa. It's been terrific in France. From me, Barry Nutley, join us again when we go racing in Estonia. This is the most incredible sport. That's why we all love it. From all of us here at WSC, God bless.
Johnson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenen certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.